Let's go over how to perform a two-tailed hypothesis test for a difference in proportions. I'll show you all the steps and the reasoning behind them. This video also has chapters, so you can skip around to the section you're most interested in. This problem we're going through is from Box textbook, Stats Modeling the World. I'll leave a link to that textbook in the description. This problem concerns a study on teens' online profile use. So one concern of the study was safety and privacy. And in the random sample that the study got, girls were less likely than boys to say that they are easy to find online from their profiles. Only 19%, or 62, of the 325 girls with profiles said that they are easy to find. Well, 28%, or 75, of the 268 boys with online profiles said the same. The question then is, are these results, the 19% of girls and the 28% of boys saying that they're easy to find online from their profiles, are these results evidence of a real difference between boys and girls in this regard? We're going to perform a two-proportion z-test and make our conclusion accordingly. Now, I need to mention that the methods of statistical inference we're using in this hypothesis test are only sound given a certain set of assumptions and conditions are true. But for the sake of time, I don't want to go through those in detail in this video. I'll leave a link in the description to the video where we do go through the assumptions and conditions necessary to use the methods that we're going to for this exact problem. And also, if you're curious, I have laid out those assumptions and conditions as they apply to this problem here on screen. So you can look through them. All you have to know for now is that the assumptions and conditions are fulfilled so we can proceed with the hypothesis test. Again, if you want to see the conditions gone over in depth, link to my video on that in the description. We'll begin with the statement of our null and alternative hypotheses. The null hypothesis, as usual for a difference in proportions, is that the proportions are actually the same, that the true population proportion of boys with online profiles who would say that they're easy to find, minus the true population for girls, is actually equal to zero. The difference is zero. They are, in fact, the same proportions. That is the null hypothesis. For the alternative hypothesis, it's important that we recognize this is a two-tailed test. That's indicated in the question because it asks us if our sample is evidence of a real difference between boys and girls. We're not specifically interested in the proportion of girls being greater than the proportion of boys or the proportion of boys being greater than the proportion of girls. We're simply interested in if this is evidence of the proportions being different. So the alternative hypothesis is that the proportions are different, meaning the proportion of boys minus the proportion of girls is not equal to zero. I'll leave a link in the description to my videos going over a lower tail and an upper tail test if you're interested in that instead. Let's begin to calculate the p-value, which is the majority of this process. Remember, conceptually, the p-value is the probability that we get a sample as exceptional as ours, given that the null is true. So if the p-value is really small, it seems quite unlikely that we would have got a sample like ours, and in that case, we may reject the null. But because we're assuming that the null is true, we're assuming that the proportion of boys and the proportion of girls is actually the same. And this assumption actually impacts how we calculate the standard error for our sampling distribution of the difference in proportions. Because since we're assuming that the proportions are actually the same, it doesn't make sense to treat the proportion of girls and the proportion of boys who say they're easy to find from their online profiles as different. We are assuming they are the same. So instead of using those two separate proportions for this hypothesis test, we actually need to use the pooled proportion. That means we take the number of girls and the number of boys who said they're easy to find online and divide by the total number of girls plus the total number of boys because we're assuming the proportions are actually the same. So it makes sense to pool them together. That makes our sample, in theory, a better estimate. And in this case, this gives us a pooled proportion of about 0.231. Now we can use this pooled proportion to calculate the standard error of our sampling distribution. Now, if you remember doing confidence intervals for difference in proportions, I'll leave links to videos on that in the description, we did not use pooled proportions. We actually used the separate proportions from the two samples. 
because in a confidence interval, there's no null hypothesis. But this is hypothesis testing. We have a null hypothesis where we are assuming the population proportions are actually the same. And that's why it makes sense to use a pooled proportion instead for a theoretical better estimate from our sample. So we use this pooled proportion in the calculation of standard error. We have the pooled proportion times 1 minus the pooled proportion divided by the number of girls, so the size of the first sample, and then plus the pooled proportion times 1 minus the pooled proportion divided by the number of boys, the size of the second sample. And all of this is in a square root. That is our standard error. And if we plug those numbers in and take a square root, we get about point 0.034a. That is the standard error. And with that, we can go ahead and calculate our z-score or test statistic. To calculate the test statistic, we take the difference in proportions from our sample, so p hat boys minus p hat girls, and subtract what we think the population difference is, the true difference in the population proportions, which by the null hypothesis is zero. And then we divide by the standard error of the sampling distribution. Plugging these numbers in, we get about 2.59. Make sure you notice for the test statistic, we actually use the difference in the sample proportions we got, which were given to us in the problem, 28% for boys and 19% for girls. It could have not given those percentages and just given us the raw numbers and we just have to do some division to calculate them ourselves. But just notice we actually use those sample proportions for the test statistic because we want to see how far away was the actual difference from our sample. How far away was that difference from the difference that is believed to be true for the population? The true difference we believe is zero based on the null hypothesis, but we got to use those actual sample proportions for the test statistic. So you have 0.28 minus 0.19, and again, this all comes out to about 2.59. All right, we are nearly done. Let's take our test statistic of 2.59 and head to the Z table. 2.5 is down here, and we're looking for 2.59, so that's going to be at the intersection of that row and column and we get about 0.9952. So the probability that Z was less than 2.59 is 0.9952. Now, we don't actually want the probability that Z was less than 2.59. We actually want the upper tail, the probability that Z was greater than 2.59, the probability that we got a sample more extreme or at least as extreme as the one that we actually got. So to calculate that, we just take 1 minus what we already calculated, the probability that Z is less than 2.59, we saw on the table, that's about 0.9952. So this upper tail, the probability that we got a sample uh, with a proportion difference at least this extreme in the positive direction is 0 0.0048. However, we have to double this because this is a two-tail test. And recall that's indicated by our alternative hypothesis that the true difference in population proportions is not zero. We're simply interested in the population proportions being different. If we had only taken this number 0.0048 as our p-value, that's just the upper tail. That's just the probability that the difference between the proportion of boys minus the proportion of girls would be at least as positive as what we got in our sample. It doesn't account for the probability that it could be this big but in the opposite direction. But we do want to include that probability. We don't care specifically if the boy's proportion is greater or if the girl's proportion is greater. We're just interested in if they're actually significantly different. That's why we need to double this p-value to include the lower tail. This is a two-tail test. So our final p-value is two times 0 0.0048, which is 0 0.0096, a very small p-value. And with that, we can state our conclusion Conclusion, back in context of the problem. Because the p-value of 0 0.0096 is very small, in this case we chose an alpha of 0 0.05, so by very small we mean that it's less than the significance level of 0 0.05. Since the p-value is very small, we reject the null hypothesis. This study provides strong evidence 
that there really is a difference. It wasn't just from random sampling, but there really is a difference in the proportions of teen girls and boys who say that they're easy to find online. This doesn't prove that the alternative hypothesis is true. It doesn't prove that the null hypothesis is false, but the study, based on the p-value, certainly does provide convincing evidence that the true population proportions here are, in fact, different. Again, drawing attention to the meaning of the p-value, if the null hypothesis was true, there would be a 0.96% chance that we could get a sample as extreme as the one we got. That's very small, and that's why this sample is convincing evidence that the null is false. And this is just a quick picture, if you want, on a normal distribution of what happened in our problem. The p-value was coming from this lower tail down here. You can see that what's shaded is a little bit past negative 2.5 because our test statistics was a bit above 2.5 and then the upper tail also shaded a little bit above 2.5 those combined areas was the p-value all right i hope this video was helpful let me know in the comments if you have any questions and a quick recap of the steps we began with the statement of our hypotheses as well as a chosen significance level then we go through the calculation of the p-value using a pooled proportion because by the null, we're assuming that the populations actually have the same proportion. So it makes sense to pool the samples together to calculate the standard error. But we have to be sure to use the actual sample proportions when we are calculating the test statistic. And then with the test statistic, consult a normal table or use a calculator to find the appropriate p-value. This process would be a little different if it was a lower tail test or an upper tail test. But once you find the correct p-value, you can state your conclusion whether you're going to reject the null if it's a really small p-value or fail to reject the null if maybe it's a little bit bigger. It, parted hearts and heavy minds weighed down by the catalyst sink into the stomachs that plummeted at the accident shot off all my habits to addicts ripped by a catapult pulled apart the patterns in man that stood as a manifold man of many pains with a number that he had to call calculate the damage of himself and what's collateral being told he's not enough until he swallowed